Welcome back to Finsight for Wealth. So it's been a dream of mine for so, so long to go from employee to business owner and work on my own terms. Today, we finally figured out how I'm gonna do it, so we're gonna share it with you. Congratulations, buddy. Thanks, mate. So Nathan, you're transitioning from being an employee across to being self-employed. You're pursuing your entrepreneurial dream. Tell us a little bit about what you're gonna be doing. Um, yeah, so I, since I was 14 years old, worked at McDonald's, I've worked in retail, I've had so many different part-time jobs, casual jobs here and there. Finished high school, went into a casual job throughout uni. And as much as I really love the idea of earning money and working hard to live the life that I wanna live, I also don't necessarily love the idea of getting told what to do. <laughs> Um, so the idea of running my own business is super appealing to me. It's something that I've wanted to do for a very long time. I started with my passion project, Uncle Nathan, and built that obviously into this ecosystem with a podcast and a blog and YouTube and so many other things with Uncle Nathan. And it's just grown into this incredible project that helps so many people, but it was really difficult to monetize. So then you hit this situation where I've got to figure out, okay, so it's one thing to build a business that helps people. It's another thing to build a business that helps people and makes good money so that I can actually live the lifestyle that I want to live. And this is where you come in because I get to learn so much from what you do and the enterprises that you've built. I've learned a lot from that. And now you're guiding me along the way to uh, get to the point where I'm running a profitable business. Yeah, well, I guess the goal for everybody and, and you as well after we've spoken is you know, to achieve financial security and time freedom. And you can either take an employee role to do, uh, to do that or you can pursue a passion or you just have some sort of entrepreneurial flair that you just have to create. And I think you definitely fit into that box. And I remember one of the first things that I said to you when you explained to me what, Nathan, what, what Uncle Nathan was, I said, how are you going to monetize that? And your response was? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> and then so then my response back to you, or well, my next follow-up question was, okay, so you're spending all these hours on this passion project, but you also need to generate income so that you can invest and create this pool of capital that you can uh, grow and is going to supply an income stream for you in the future. So how do you see Uncle Nathan transitioning from generating zero revenue into revenue into the future and what skills have you learned that you can transition to something else and that you went to, you didn't have an answer for that right then no. well that's exactly why i've been working my part-time jobs it's like i've been juggling the two because the part-time job gives me the stable income that i can invest and start to build my wealth and then the uncle nathan stuff is what i'm actually passionate about pursuing so it's been really difficult to juggle the two because i find that i have absolutely no time because I've essentially got two full-time jobs and only one's paying me money. Yeah, and the other thing was you're also a full-time student. So you decided to wrap up your degree mm -hmm. and then pursue this passion full-time because your top goals for this year are? I want to move overseas. So yeah, I guess let's paint the picture for everyone watching because obviously you and I have been living the story, but these guys are just tuning in possibly for the first time. Um, so essentially, yeah, the beginning of this year, 2023, I wrapped up my uni degree, finished with a Bachelor of Business, majoring in finance and a diploma in innovation. Um, the goal for my year this year was to consolidate myself. So last year I had work, I had uni, I had Uncle Nathan, I had other things that I was passionate about, I had sport and I had life. This year I want it all to be one big ecosystem. So essentially Uncle Nathan falls under this umbrella, but I've got uni out of the way. I've quit my job and Matt and I have started building an agency and that agency essentially complements what we're doing here on YouTube, teaching all of you financial education. It also complements what I do with Uncle Nathan because it all fits under the one umbrella which is essentially helping other people, helping young people get ahead in life and that's sort of where we're at now. The goal is to build all of this up to the point where I'm making enough money to sustain myself living overseas and working overseas on my own terms. And then one of the key things that we've sort of looked at is how do you transition your current roles that you have and all the skills into this new enterprise? And it was very interesting. You were first saying, well, I'm just going to quit everything and we're going to start from scratch. And I was like, hold on there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we look at um, all the skills that you've already got? You're basically working as a, an agency role, but just as an employee. So why don't we look at actually bringing that particular employee on as your first client? 
So that's um, borne some fruit for us thus far. And now we've got, I think it's about three clients on board. And so Nathan is off to a roaring start in this little enterprise business. I guess one of the things, well, what was the first thing that we sat down and did? After Bali, you mean? Yeah. I mean, the first thing that we sat down and said was, this is a situation, this is where I am now, and this is where I want to be. And based on that, and something that I really admire about you is your adaptability, because we already had a plan in place. We had a completely different plan in place. Um, and your ability to take what I said that I wanted and come up with a brand new plan that completely destroyed whatever plan you had was really helpful for me because then we could start to actually fruit something. From but that's it. also what I do. So my job, my everyday job is solving people's problems. So the biggest thing that I do is I sit down with people and identify where they are. I have really robust discussions with them about what their future looks like. And then there's a whole problems around getting from A to B or from A to Z. And then so I fill in those gaps or I have over the last sort of 20 years built up the skill set to be able to continue to dig and ask those questions so that we can find the, part, the quickest pathway to there. And, you know, life is dynamic. Things are always changing. And if you do not have like a growth mindset or a mindset which allows you to adapt to things as they change, then you're going to be very rigid in your thoughts and rigid in your life. And that's just not a fun way to live. Well, that's not the way that I want to live. Um, but yeah, it was definitely a curveball when you <laughs> popped back from your Bali holiday and says, I want to go and live in Bali for <laughs> in the next three months. I was like, okay, that's interesting. Um, how are we going to make that happen? But so that's my first question is, this is what someone wants, you know, how do we make that happen? And then we just continue to ask that question until we then can map out a plan. And so hence, this is where we're at. This and is where we're you at. you are on the pathway to, to achieving that first goal. So it's gonna be, I'm, I'm super excited for you. Thank you, yeah, I'm, I'm pumped too. And I guess the reason that we wanted to share this with all of you is because Finsightful Wealth as a YouTube channel is all about helping you get control of your money to live the life that you wanna live. And a big part of that is discovering whether you want to run your own business, whether you want to work for someone else, how you're going to bring in money into your own personal world and then invest that to make essentially a better lifestyle for yourself. And I want to share this whole journey with you so you can see the ins and outs of what it's like to actually build this agency from the start up. You can see what it's like to run a YouTube channel. You can see what it's like to run Uncle Nathan and how we invest the money that we make through the agency and through the YouTube channel. We want to be as transparent as possible with all of you guys so that you can essentially follow along. And if you want, follow the exact recipe that we're trying to build this lifestyle that I want to live. Yeah, building a successful business, there is definitely a roadmap to, to do that. Um, you need to have a skill or a product that you're going to sell um, or you're going to deliver to your clients and that needs to be packaged up. And then you need to be able to have a marketing department which actually lets everyone else in the world know who you are and what, you're, what you can help them do. Uh, and then you need to have all of the finance and accounting and all the different bits and pieces, which my business, my other businesses already do all of that. So you're very lucky, we can get, we've got all that stuff sorted. So it's gonna be very, um, it's gonna be fun, fun journey. To get Absolutely. Started. Well, if you haven't already seen the videos that we did right at the beginning that teach you how to set up a company and set up a new business, that would be super helpful as well. Those are the exact steps that we use to set up this new agency. And something else that I wanna to touch on as well is what you just said. The first step to discovering what the new plan was is to figure out what skills I already have that I could leverage into a business. So for me, I'd spent the last year and a half learning Facebook ads. I'd been learning how to run Facebook ads for companies and essentially bring them revenue and leads. And that's been the goal for me for the last year and a half. So we sort of sat down and we said, well, that's something that has been proven to work. It's proven that I'm decent at doing that. So why not present that as a service to other companies as well, rather than just the one company? And I think also before you pursue moving out of an employee role, you really have to be passionate about working for yourself. Working for yourself is one of the hardest things you will ever do because work never stops. You are always just thinking about ways to um, improve your, your business itself, working on the business, and then also working on your clients' businesses or clients' goals so that you can assist them. So, you know, being an entrepreneur or starting your own business, uh, it's not for everybody and sometimes you can just find a career and you can pursue that and as so long as you are saving Maybe just becoming a fantastic investor is like a side hustle or a business that you can pursue yourself 
And a great way to learn whether or not that is for you is to subscribe to our journey and watch along. It uh, helps us massively, it helps you massively. You can learn exactly what we're doing from start to finish. Watch me go overseas, watch me live the life that I wanna live. Actually speaking on that, a good point to bring up here is, what happens if it all fails? What do I do if everything I'm trying to do right now goes to shit? So if 12 months from now, you haven't launched a successful a digital agency, I guess you can always fall back on the degree that you have and you can just go and get a job. So one of the key things that you don't wanna do when you're starting a small business or any type of business is to go into a large amount of debt. So you want to be able to look at your current financial situation, allocate an amount of capital and a timeline for you to be able to achieve some milestones. And then if you don't achieve those within certain time periods, you need to really reflect upon whether you should continue to go down that path. Um, unfortunately, I've seen a lot of people, you know, start a new business, mortgage their homes, get into a debt, get into debts of the hundreds of thousands of dollars, and then all they've given away five years of their life, and they they see now they've not only have been stagnant for that period of time, but they've actually gone backwards. And you definitely don't wanna do that. So before you start a business, make sure you understand the capital requirements and make sure you understand how you're gonna be generating income and some timelines as to when you're gonna generate the amount of money that you're gonna to need to support that enterprise. It's a really good point because when I was at uni, there were so many times where I thought, this is just teaching me to work for a corporation. Why on earth would I need this? There were so many times where I was close to dropping out because I was like, I don't need this piece of paper. But now being in the position where I have risked pretty much everything to start my own business, I'm like, worse comes to worse, I have my piece of paper, the degree to fall back on. I've got the Uncle Nathan ecosystem to prove that I can create something on social media if I ever needed it. So these, there's these things, these stepping stones that at the time don't necessarily feel that important but now give me the security to know that I could really just go after what I want with 100% focus because if it doesn't work out, there's things that I can do to get back to where I was. And also, so when you're worried or concerned about ever making these big decisions in your life, um, Tim Ferriss has explained it the best. He, he said you basically write down the absolute worst thing that can happen. So if the absolute worst three things that can happen from you making a particular decision and investing money or time, which time is more important than money, uh, into some sort of venture, if you, can, if you can accept that worst case scenario, then it's a risk you're willing to take. If you look at that worst case scenario and it's losing my home, which houses my wife and my children, then that's potentially not a risk that you're willing to take and that's probably something that I don't recommend anyone doing, even though it's not personal advice. Um, Read the sign. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when you're trying to consider these things, always, I guess, look at the bright side and how beneficial that business enterprise is going to be. But then on the flip side, really work out what the worst case scenario is. And, and remember that, you know, 80% of businesses fail in the first sort of two to three years and then 90% of those fail in the first five. So, you know, starting small business is not a walk in the park. You've got to be willing to do a lot of hard work and that's not to, you know, disenfranchise you. I'm just sort of speaking some truths that I've learned over many, many years of running my own business and seeing a lot of other businesses Absolutely. from the inside. And it's a, good, it's a good place to bring up our conversation yesterday. It's, I feel like the first few weeks of getting everything going, I was working really hard, super motivated, loving where it was going. Everything was working. And then all of a sudden, seemingly out of nowhere, it goes from everything working to something seeming like they're about to implode without me having done anything and zero changes. And it's this constant ebb and flow that I think everything is in life. And I honestly think like a really good lesson to learn early on, because if you can weather the storm in the early days, it's gonna make you much more resilient to weather the storm in the later days. And that storm is inevitably gonna come, so I've heard. Well, I think when you run your own business, it's sort of always raining. It just depends on you know, the volume of water that's being thrown at you. There are always problems happening and you always need to resolve them. And as your enterprise gets larger and larger, there are just bigger and bigger problems and more problems that you need to solve. Uh, the most successful entrepreneurs are the ones who are the best problem solvers and the ones that are always trying to create win-win solutions um, for themselves, uh, for their staff, for the people that work with them, and then also for their clients. That's one of the key things if you want to become a successful just person in life is always look to negotiate win-win solutions because that's going to be the best way for everyone um, to achieve their goals. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I'm doing this with Matt. <laughs> and that is also why you guys can do it with us. We can share all of our mistakes and failures so that you guys can see what we do 
and also see about all of our successes. I have made a lifetime of mistakes and I am going to try as hard as possible to ensure that you don't make the same ones and your, I guess, track towards success is as short and profitable as possible. Mate, we're gonna work hard, we're gonna make it happen. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. I hope that taught you a little bit about what we're doing, the narrative of Insightful Wealth as a company and as a project, and I hope you're excited for the future just like we are. Well, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the like button as well if you enjoyed the video. It helps us out massively. Comment, say something, we wanna hear from you. We wanna to reply to you guys and have conversations down below. We'll uh, see you in the next video. Have a good one.